Have you ever stood back after making a quilt and said, wow, I made that. This is that for me. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and I made 200 flying geese after learning these secrets. I want to share this with you. You are going to be so excited because it makes flying geese so much easier. Yes, we know the methods, but what about the little tricks along the way? What about those small adjustments that we make that will create a beautiful finished geese block? You're going to need to know how to do this. So let's get started. I have a lot to share with you. Before taking a look at the entire quilt, I want to talk to you about how I made 200 flying geese and made them very well and pretty easily and in short time compared to what it could have been. And there are five specific tips, my secrets, that I want to share. First off, when you're making a lot of flying geese, use the no waste method. You get four at a time and it is just such a quick way to make your flying geese. I find it also creates more accuracy, maybe because I'm working on four at one time, I'm getting more accurate that way, or perhaps it's just that I'm getting used to it and it works well for me. But either way, this is the way to go. The second thing is your accuracy in sewing, but also cutting. You need to make sure that your squares all measure the dimension you need. I find if I make my small square just a couple threads larger, that's going to help my flying geese turn out better. So you're going to find what works for you. I left my large block the same size. I cut the small ones just a little bit larger, and it worked beautifully. So we need to cut our, our uh, blocks accurately, and then we need to sew accurately. And what I do there is it's important to use your scant seam allowance when you're making flying geese. Actually, on any triangles, even on half square triangles, I do that. And you can see that this seam from side to side, there's my center line. And you can see that from half inch to half inch, it's just under that half inch mark. It's just shy of a quarter inch. And the reason that's important is when we fold our fabrics over and press them, we're going to get a really nice clean seam that lays well, but it also gives us the additional fabric that we need in order to create the flying geese size that we want. And you'll notice I have my pins in. Pin these because back to accuracy again, when you're making your, your blocks, you need to draw a line down the center. Get that line exactly in the corner because that's going to be your guideline for sewing. And if that is skewed and it's not in the right place, you're not going to get a straight seam. Then make sure that this line lines up to the other block as you're sewing. So these little pointers are going to make such a big difference when you make your own geese. Pin it in place while you sew it. And then when I press it, I don't press it on the front, I press it on the back. That is because you see here where you get just that littlest bit of a wrinkle when you sew one direction and come back the other. It's not uncommon to get this little wave. I want that to be on the back so when I cut this, it's not affecting this narrow edge seam. I think that works better for me. I like pressing it here because I don't have loose ends to worry about like I do on the front. And I put my iron down, it's pressed, it's beautiful, and I'm good to go, and then I'm ready to cut it. Then once I cut it, I start pressing, and this is, this is the final tip that is so critical for flying geese. They need to be flat. We have a lot of fabric coming together at these points on the outside edges as well as the beaks of the geese. And we want that to lie flat. By giving it a good steam, we're going to have beautiful geese that go together very, very well. And again, we're talking about seams. That scant seam 
come inside that point. You don't want to sew past that point because that's where you're going to lose your beaks. And we cannot have flying geese without beaks. So that sums it up. I am going to do a, a quick demo later on in the video if you want to watch that. Otherwise, you can skip ahead and see more of the quilt. But I found this to be absolutely a game changer in making this quilt. This was such a wonderful flying geese quilt to make. I love the, it's called the Remix Flying Geese, or Remix the Geese. And I love the way they're randomly placed throughout the quilt. You have all four of them together, but you see how some go in one direction. These, they go this way, they go that way. And here we have a meet in the middle. And so there's just a lot. And then these points come together. There's just a lot going on. The advantage to this is that it changes up how your seams align, which is nice. It makes it a bit easier. But I just love that random nature and how it looks across the quilt. There are so many different places where you just have to take a second look and go, oh, wow, look at that. That's so awesome. I love these. And just about everything in here is a batik. And um, I did use some of my scrap fabrics as well. So I did have the uh, Felicity Batiks fat quarter bundle is what I used initially. And that's what most of these batiks are. And then I added a few of my own uh, fabrics that I had uh, extra in my Christmas pile. So, I, you know, and I just love how all these colors work, how this quilt goes together and the blocks make such a great pattern. So if you like flying geese and you're looking for a Christmas quilt, this is great. And the pattern is free. It's down below. You can uh, download it. There's a link down there. It's from Robert Kaufman Fabrics. It's called Remixed Geese. You'll love making this quilt. It's a lot of fun. Here's a quick overview of how to make the no-waste flying geese. This is where you use a large square and four smaller squares to make four flying geese at one time. And the beauty of this is there's no waste with your fabric. Originally, the pattern had you make it in a different way that had a lot of waste on the corners. So this is an ideal situation, and I find it to be incredibly accurate, and it really reduces my trimming time. So basically what you do is you take your large square, and it can vary. There are all kinds of charts on the internet, depending on um, the sizes that you want. The ones I use for this, this particular quilt, it's the Remixed Geese, available as a free pattern from robertkaufman.com, and I'll put that link down below. The size used is the large square is seven and a quarter, and these are three and seven eighths. Now, I did bump this up just a little bit, almost to four inches, just to give me a little bit more wiggle room, and I found that worked out well. So essentially, we just put these on our block, so we put two at a time initially, and then what we're going to do is sew along that line. We're going to come down a quarter inch here and back a quarter inch the other side. A scant quarter inch, not a full quarter inch. You want to go just a little bit less, which will give you the room that you need to get the right size block. And then we cut these in half, and this is where it all comes together. And I just thought this was the coolest thing the first time I made these, because I really couldn't conceptualize how this all went together. And when, when this came together, I thought, wow, this is so fun. I love it. And what you do is you cut them apart, and now we're going to put one square here and one square here. We're going to sew a quarter inch this way, a quarter inch that way, and then cut these in half. And when you do that, you've got one flying geese here and the other on this side. So that's how you get the four of them. Now, notice on this particular layout, I used a light background and my smaller squares were done in the, in the darker fabric. So the light background is actually going to be the goose and these smaller squares are going to be the sky. Now, think about that as you're putting your fabrics together and what your intentions are, because I did both. I took each of the fat quarters that I had and I cut one large square and four small squares from every color. And then I just mixed everything together just so I'd have, you know, just a lot to look at. It'd be sort of a scrappy looking quilt with lots of fun colors and interest. And I really like how it turned out. So we have 
these right here. And this is what we're going to end up with is we cut this. We're going to get one of our flying geese. We're going to sew two together and there we are. But I want to talk to you just a minute about how these are sewn together. Accuracy is important when you're making your flying geese because you're working with triangles and if you're not exactly where you need to be, then you're going to come up short or things won't line up. Now, when I sewed these pieces, I just chain stitched when I did all of them at one time. I had to do about 50 of these sets to get four, which would be 200 total. And um, that was a lot of sewing. So I chain stitched and you can see I went down one side of the line and back the other. Then when I'm done, I come back and I trim. But when I cut the threads, I trim just that little point off. And that just saves me the time of trimming those off after the fact. And so I trim a little here and a little there. And then once that's done, I press this. I press it from the back. And that way I don't get any wrinkles along the seam. So let's go ahead and trim this in half. And then I take this and I'm pressing it that way. And I press this and then this is where I end up. So then I have all four of these. I'm going to press them nicely and I'm going to trim them. Now trimming them is important because you want to make sure these are square. You've sewn and cut on the bias, which can distort the fabric and, and the seams and such so that it can be a little bit skewed. What you want to be able to do is cut this, trim it so that you have a nice rectangle, a nice square rectangle that's going to sew together well. And what I do is I just line it up on my grid and I just kind of see where I am. Now I want it to be six and a half, which I have about six and three quarters by three and a half. And I have three and a half here, but this ended up being a little longer. And that can happen when you're sewing on the bias. That's why we need to trim. Because if I were to sew this to another block, then this side is going to come up short and this will be long. And when I go to sew everything together and put my pairs together like this and then put four of them, I'm going to have some trouble getting things to match. So it's very simple. Just, you know, put this square right where you want it. I just start in a spot where everything lines up nice and even. I want to put my ruler so that the... Let's see, we're at six and a half, so I want this to be three and a quarter. And so here's my three. Let me put it this way so we can see it more clearly. So here's one, two, three and a quarter. That three and a quarter needs to go right on the point on the beak of the goose. And we're going to put this to the top. Now, I will tell you, I cut as little as possible off this top edge. I'll, I'll trim off the dog ear, but I don't want to trim off too much because I need this quarter inch seam in order to get my seam allowance when I'm sewing these together. And that's what I want to show you next is how to join these blocks. So if I find that this is going to be particularly long on one side, like we saw that this one is, I'm going to line this across the top and then let me line this up here. And we'll go to, yep, there's my long side there. So I'm at three and a half over on this side, and I'm a little long on that side. So what I would do, I'm just making sure I'm all the way up to the line. You know, now that I have that squared up, I don't have much at all. It's actually lining up on the three and a half. You see that bow? And I talked about this before. When you're sewing on the bias, the fabric, two things happen. The fabric cinches up when you sew it. So the stitching line crimps the fabric together and it cinches it up a bit and it tends to draw it in. So these corners are drawn in and that allows this to bow out a little bit. Don't trim that off. If these are even from side to side, that's fine. You're going to just sew this as this as a uh, straight seam and then this fabric will work its way back in here where it belongs. If you cut that out, 
you'll be stretching this fabric along the bias seams and it'll pull and it won't lay well. So just always make sure that you get your, uh, your blocks lined up well. So once everything is trimmed and you can see they're, they're nice and square, you want to sew a quarter inch seam. And I always sew it so that the, the flying geese beak is on the top. You see where that is right there? And this is where the pieces are joined. And then I'm sewing my two flying geese together. I do not want to cut off that little point, that little nose right there. And so when I put these together, I'm sewing my quarter inch, kind of a scant quarter inch. I don't do a full quarter inch. I almost don't use a full quarter inch on anything anymore. I find I just get more accurate if I go just a little bit less. And maybe that's because I tend to take a larger seam. So by taking less, I'm probably right where I need to be. So you find what works for you. And so as I'm sewing, I want to make sure I'm on this side of that point. If I sew exactly on the point or past it, I'm cutting off that beak. I want to be on this side of it. And that way, when I turn my fabric, see how nice I've got that little bit of background fabric right there around my, my beak so that it looks nice and straight. We don't want any cut off beaks. So the way this quilt goes together is as you make your, um, your four flying geese, you sew them into pairs. And then you're going to assemble your quilt. Now, as I showed you, there's there's a lot of ways that these blocks go together in this particular quilt. And I love it. It's really interesting. You've got the basics this way, where you just put four of them all in one direction. And this can be flipped around in a number of different ways throughout the quilt. So this is the most that you make. Now, another thing, think about this real quick. So let's put this here. And think about how much easier it is if I put the next block this way. Because now I don't have to match these seams. So that's one thing that you'll find in this particular quilt is that you're going to have a lot of changing in the direction of your flying geese. And generally that means less seam matching, which is making things much easier. Now, I probably wouldn't join this because that background and the geese look too much alike. But if I were to do this, you notice how that geese stands out more on this side. So think about your colors. Like I said, contrast is really important. And we have some great contrast here, but it also matters in your placement in the overall quilt. So we know how to put these together. And then once these are paired up, it's time to assemble the quilt. And I'm going to show you how I did that. I used a cheat sheet. What I did is I printed the pattern in a grayscale. So I just did a copy and paste on a Word document. I made the margins narrow and then I just filled the page and I printed it with black ink only so I'd get a grayscale. And this way it was so much easier to follow. If you print the color version, there's so many colors going on. Unless you're doing exactly the same color scheme or fabric, it's kind of hard to follow. So I found doing it this way, and you can see I checked off as I went so I knew where I was. But this is where I want to show you. See how these geese are going in so many different directions. So here's a pair that goes sideways. These are four in a row with the noses facing. These are four in a row with the tails facing. And there's just a lot of different ways that these are placed to add interest, but it also makes the seams come together easier. So the designer of this uh, quilt pattern had a good handle on how best to piece the flying geese because this, this went together well. It took some time. It's, uh, it's a bit of sewing because we have approximately 200 of these. I think it's officially 196 maybe or something like that, but 200 all, all said and told and 100 of these. So you pair them up and then these go together, like I said, in fours, either this way, this way, this way, whatever. And then that's how we piece our quilt and put it together. Let me go ahead and show you some of the things that I did on this quilt that I don't want you to make the same mistakes on. 
overall, I did really well. I didn't have many problems other than um, not paying attention is essentially what happened. So I have these, but look what happened here on this guy. Um, trimming, I'm, I was cutting a little bit here, and this piece got folded over and caught up, and I cut, and I, I lost that, and it went down into my seam allowance. So this is going to have to become something else. This will go on the scrap pile. I can use these. Um, I ended up not using them in the quilt because I didn't have four of a kind, and so that got set aside. This is the one that I knew it was time to stop quilting and take a break. So I sewed my my uh, flying geese on this side, and I, I pressed it, and then notice what I did. Here's my seam allowance. So I have a seam allowance on each side, and I did it on the wrong side on all of them. Oh, my goodness. When I realized that, you can see I haven't even gone back to correct it. It's like, nope. We are going to turn off the machine. It is time to take a break, and uh, I'm going to bed. I'll take care of this tomorrow. And the quilt did go together really well. I had very few problems. Like I said, this is just me um, not being attentive, and I'll put these aside so I know that I have to fix them and not just try and use them. But I do want to show you some of the seams and how they went together. My biggest question when I was sewing this together is how I was going to press it. And I did press everything, to, you know, as far as my seam allowance to one side. That works best when you're doing the flying geese with this method. But then when you have your seams together, I tried some of them, pressing them open, and I didn't like it at all. So I pressed everything away from the beaks, everything away from the point. And that worked out really well for the most part. And, you know, there's always a few little spots when you're working with angles like this, triangles or half square triangles, whatever the case may be. And you do have to sort of make it work. And I'll show you some of the things that I did that uh, worked really well for me. Before we take a look at the back, I just want to show you how this goes together. We do one row at a time. And each block consists of two flying geese. That's why you pair everything up. And by sewing them this way, the block can go in this direction or this direction, so we have a square. If you try and do each of these individually, it'll get really complex when you're putting them this way and this way. It doesn't work well at all. So pairing them up is a great way to do this, and that's generally how the flying geese block is made. This is the corner where I started. So my first block was let me do it this one. This was my first block going this direction, and then the next block went this way. And that worked out well because I could easily line up my points. And that's what you want to pay attention to, is you want these noses or beaks of your geese not to be cut off. They can be, you know, right up there, they can be close, but we don't want to cut them off. And that's where... This comes important is to make sure that you sew on the right side of that beak in order to keep it so we've got a point on the front of your block. Now, as I sewed this together, I sewed a couple rows and then I would press it. Just because there was so much going on and seams going every which way, I wanted to make sure that it was pressed well as I went. And so I did this the uh, first row, and I did three together. So I did this, this, and this. So these three, and I'd sew across nine blocks. There's a total of 11 the long ways and nine um, going across. And so I would sew this one here, this one here, and this one here. And then I would come back and I'd sew the long rows. And you can see that here where all the rows are sewn together like this. And then in between, I would press the geese one way, and then I would press them the other way in the opposite direction. And what I'm talking about is the seams that join the blocks. And that worked out really well for me. I, Like I said, I tried on a couple of them doing uh, the seams open, and that didn't work well for me for whatever reason. But I did find I used a lot of steam with my iron. So as I'm I'm sewing and I come back and I press the seam, I pressed it good and I gave it a good steam so I could set that 
um, seam allowance where I wanted it and everything laid nice and flat and you can see it lays you know pretty well there's a few little places here and there but for the most part this went together quite nicely and I'm just trying to see if there's anything else and and here's one here you can see where they join up side by side these continued in a row it's just a lot of fun I want to show you a picture of the entire quilt so you can see it. I love how this turned out. It is really, really pretty. Just look at all those colors. I love this quilt. I love the flying geese going every which way, and they're paired up in different directions. It just creates such an interesting quilt, and you just go along a single row. There's four in a row. There's two side by side. This way, we've got a... a diamond a square in the middle and this almost looks like a chevron the way we're going there and just fun fun fabrics and a fun layout there's probably about 40 different fabrics in here and i love the way it all works the contrast between these these uh, fabrics works great now there's a common theme with colors it's red green gold and then sort of this gray and white background like a low volume and i really really like how it works together so you can use a lot of colors as long as you sort of keep a color scheme or a what do i want to say some sort of a common factor between them all whether they're all brights or they're all plaids or whatever the case and in this case they're batiks but again, they're, they're in that same color scheme and it just works so well together. I really love this quilt. This is my new favorite Christmas quilt and I hope you like it enough to give it a try. It's a free pattern and it's a lot of fun to make. I think you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for being here, for watching. It's always a pleasure to share my quilts with you and I hope you have fun doing some Christmas quilting in these next few weeks. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.